Hello there, Atheist Jr. here, your friend and humble narrator, and I'm back with a, a new live stream. So I want to talk about the channel real quick, um, I because, you know, I haven't quite reached a new milestone for subscribers, but I feel like uh, I, I have to mention this, and the milestones are coming so fast, it's like hard to, you know, hard to keep up honestly uh so i'm just checking social blade real quick uh so the channel is uh 10 subscribers away from being 5500 subs which is 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 awesome thank you guys i'm so happy to uh see all the new viewers welcome i hope you guys enjoy uh the content on the channel um and today's video is going to be slightly different. So I'm back with another video about Ken Hoven. So the last stream we did uh, a video response to Mike Winger. And uh, that video didn't perform as well as I might have hoped. It is, it is indeed time to rank on Ken Hoven again, but it's going to be a little bit different. We're not looking at a video. So there's been quite a few channels who have responded to, who have read Kent Hovind's dissertation. Now, this is a kind of a complicated issue because Kent has, Kent's first PhD or his first doctor's degree uh, from Patriot Bible College, the prevailing wisdom among atheists and people running anti Kent Hovind websites was that the dissertation was the infamous Hello, My Name is Kent Hovind document. It has no page numbers, spelling mistakes, that is, uh, it has no table of context, no, no bibliography, um, and is written, uh, I would say, at a, a fourth grade level, but I wrote way better essays than that in the fourth grade. Recently, though, uh, after Emma Thorne, who is a friend of mine and uh, just just a peach, I love Emma. She's awesome. She's she's awesome. So after she did a video reading that dissertation, if you can even call it a dissertation, then Kent seemed to sort of change his tune. Now he was saying that he. Uh, Patriot Bible College asked him to do a tra to transcribe his seminar series into text, and that would count as his dissertation. Never mind the fact that the school itself, I don't think, would ask a PhD candidate to tell them what to write their dissertation about. That seems strange. Usually, the student would choose um and as well as the fact that you know kent's uh hello my name is kent hoven paper does not make an original contribution to knowledge or academia it's all stuff he's cribbed from other creationists but he started saying that he transcribed the seminar and that was the dissertation for the doctor's degree and I actually tracked this document down. I have not seen anybody else. Um, I've not seen anybody else read or show this document on YouTube. So I guess this will be an atheist junior exclusive. I don't know. But the thing is, is that this this paper, I feel like I'm really building up the suspense. This paper isn't just a word for word transcription of the seminar series, you know, Video one, video number two, uh, lies in the textbook, the Hovind theory, the dangers of evolution, it's the foundation for Nazism, communism, uh, the Food Network, Paula Dean, it's, it's the foundation for, you know, uh, R. Kelly, it's the foundation for every bad thing in the world. Um, it, while it does have some, a lot of sections that are word for word the same, 
some of it just goes off the rails crazy. And there's a lot of mentions of the Illuminati. So let's just get into this. Now, I don't, uh, I don't know if I, uh, I don't think I'll be doing the Kent Hovind voice the whole time because that might get kind of exhausting or old, but I, I may do it here and there. So um, I have some specific pages that I plan on on reading, but uh, we'll start with um, the beginning. Okay, we have a super chat from Owlsum OVO for five pounds. It says, thank you for doing this to yourself so we can watch and giggle away our desperation. Now, is that OVO like uh, October's very own? This is gonna be good, yeah. Okay, so do you, about Dr. Hoven. Ken Hoven is not a doctor. He, he did not earn uh, a PhD. The school is not capable of giving a PhD. He is a mister at best, and, and he's not even a mister because he's not a gentleman. Do you know about the scientific facts supporting biblical creationism? Do you know the facilities in the theory of evolution? I think you mean fallacies. We're off to a great start. Dr. Kent Hoven is one of the foremost authorities on science capitalized in the Bible. He has debated evolutionist at many universities. Oh, uh, real quick, this document has no apostrophes. None, not a single one. And Kent Hoven um, constantly will, when he does his comments on comments, he'll uh, be a total grammar Nazi. He constantly will nitpick other people's grammars if they're an atheist. Oh, it's just an owl face. Okay. <laughs> So, one of the foremost authorities on science in the Bible. Okay, okay. He has debated evolutionists at many universities across America and is dedicated to the proclamation of factual scientific evidence supporting the biblical record of creation and the history of the world, which is, there is none. His fact-filled, fact-filled, okay, creation seminars are exciting and informative, causing even the most devout evolutionists to sit up and take notice. Christians will be encouraged in their faith and non-believers will be seriously challenged to reconsider their beliefs. If they're non-believers, then how can they have beliefs? <laughs> Dr. Kent Hoven is from Pensacola, Florida. There should be a comma there. But originally, originally is from Illinois. He was a high school science teacher for 15 years. No, he was not. He may have taught um, in a church. He may have taught in a private Christian school that he started. But he did not, and he may have even taught in a high school, but he did not teach in a public high school because he was not qualified. He travels around the country speaking on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs over 700 times a year. This is not mathematically possible, okay? If we're counting speaking on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs as him giving one of his seminars, then unless he's doing it uh, let's just do some quick math on the calculator. Let's see, unless, well, he would have to give two seminars every single day, every day of the year. And I know that Kent Hovind claims that he had over a million miles, uh, over a million frequent flyer miles, and that he traveled to all 50 states and 36 countries giving his seminars. So is th there is no possible way that he gave us two seminars each day without missing some to travel. So 700 times a year, that's just not possible. Unless speaking on creation and evolution and dinosaurs includes him bothering the person sitting next to him on the plane. The following information has been transcribed from several public messages given by Dr. Hoven on the subject of creationism versus evolutionism. It is being offered to encourage and strengthen the faith of believers to convince the unbelievers there is a God who loves them and wants a personal relationship. Okay, so we are going to jump ahead a little bit. I have picked out some select passages because there's no way I could read all of this. And a lot of it is word for word the same as the seminar. So if you've seen Kent's seminars, there's no point in me really reading this. But there are some very, there are a lot of changes and some new stuff that's totally different. So, okay. Oh, God. So, uh, for example, we have the infamous dentist story. So, we're going to start off with a bang. 
Oh boy, why did I why did I pick this one to be the first? Okay, so I'm not going to do the voice on this one because I think that would be inappropriate. Okay, uh, would you be interested if I could save you fifty thousand dollars? I took one of my kids to the dentist one time. I I literally just went to the dentist today. Oh my god, <laughs> I didn't want to think about that. But I'm I'm completely done. Uh, just real quick. So I had to get a root canal done and I had to get a crown on my tooth. My tooth was messed up. It was it hurt really bad. It was horrible. But I I got it. I'm all done. I got it all fixed. It was freaking expensive, but I'm I'm finished. And I didn't cry. I did not cry. I was there from 930 in the morning till 1 p.m. OK, so. Uh, I took one of my kids to the dentist one time when he was about six or seven years old. The dentist said, Mr. Hovind, this kid has a cavity. I said, yes, sir, I know about that. Are you talking about the big one in his head or the one in his tooth? He said, well, just the one in his tooth. That's the one we are going to fix today. So just outright calling your own son stupid. That's weird. Why would you do that? Why would you call your, why would you call your son stupid in front of the dentist? That seems very cruel. Why would you do that? I said, yes, sir. Well, just the one in this tooth. That's the one we're going to fix today. OK, let's fix it, doc. Then I said, now, son, you've got to sit still. The dentist has to give you a shot. He says, a shot, a shot. I said, yes, he's going to give you a shot. Calm down. I've had one before. I literally, when I got my root canal, I literally got like five injections of Novocaine all on this side of my mouth. But I, I didn't feel them because I was high on nitrous oxide. Which, which is, this is something I wanted to bring up. Why is it at no point in this story they, the dentist or Kent doesn't think to offer the kid nitrous oxide? Now, I could be wrong. Maybe somebody in the chat can Google this. Um, can, is a seven-year-old, is that too young to have nitrous oxide? Because I think pretty young children can have it. And it really does help. Like, I literally did not feel my injections. I, I barely felt them. Um... I said, yes, he's going to give you a shot. Calm down. I've had one before. I showed him where I had mine. Where? In your mouth? I said, it's no problem. When he gives you the shot, your mouth will go numb. So he can drill out the bad part and fill the hole with silver. He says, daddy, he's going to give me a shot. I said, yes, son, he's going to give you a shot. Way to calm the kid down, Kent. Like, <laughs> oh, don't worry, son. I've gotten one before. He's seven. You're an adult. And what, this seems like it's his first time ever getting a shot, clearly. Don't you understand the situation? You need to put a little bit more effort into calming your own son down. Jeez. Now listen carefully. Sit still. If you wiggle, I'm going to have to take you outside and spank you, so don't wiggle. He did his best. He tried to sit still, but when the doctor pulled out that giant needle about 12 feet long and poured in a, about 18 gallons of Novocaine and said, OK, kid, open up, he freaked. Have you ever seen a kid freak out? I mean, completely lose control in a dentist chair? He lost it. He was screaming and hollering and yelling. Well, the doctor called the nurse and the nurse sat on him. The doctor sat on him and I sat on him. You sat on him? What? I, I am struggling to understand if this is supposed to be a joke or not. We tried to hold him still, but we couldn't hold him still enough for that kind of operation. So three adults couldn't hold a seven-year-old still. I don't think that Gertrude and her tribe could have held him still enough for that. Finally, after a few minutes, the doctor gave up and said, I can't work on this kid. Why not give him nitrous? I'm sorry, I just can't do it. I said, Doc, let me take him outside and talk to him for a few minutes. We went out to the parking lot, got in the old Chevy van, and sat in the back seat. I said, son, listen carefully. You know that I love you. He said, I know, daddy. I said, now, son, I told you to sit still. You did not sit still. What happens when you disobey, daddy? He said, I get a spanking. I said, correct, bend over. And boy, did I give him a spanking, and it was a doozy. A few minutes later, smoke was rising off his hind end. Tears were coming out of his eyes, and pearls were coming out of his nostrils, the whole thing. I said, okay, son, listen carefully. We are going to go back into the dentist's office and you are going to sit in that chair. If you wiggle one time, I'm not going to yell at you and I'm not going to scream at you. I'm just, you see how people can be abusive without yelling and screaming? It's a good example. 
I'm going to calmly take you back out here to the van and I'm going to give you two spankings like the one you just received. Then we are going to go back into the dentist's office and you are going to sit in the chair. If you wiggle, we are going to, if you, if you wiggle, we are going to come back out to the van and you are going to get three spankings like the one you just got. Son, we are going to go back and forth all day long until I get tired and I have played tennis for years. I have a wonderful forehand smash. I don't believe I'll get tired for a long time, son. I believe he knew that and I knew that. We went back into the dentist's office. That kid sat in the chair. That kid? You mean your son? The dentist said, open, why is this capitalized? Open your mouth. He opened his mouth. The dentist said, open it wider. Why is this capitalized? He held it open real wide. And I said, son, why is this capitalized? Is he Jesus? Is your son Jesus? Kent, are you God? He looked over at me and he looked at the dentist with that giant needle. He started to shake and then looked at me again. I, that, I feel so sorry for this kid. Not only is Kent Hovind his dad, but I just, that's just awful. Imagine how terrified he must have been. As he gripped the chair, that's what I was doing when I was at the dentist. He did not move a muscle. I don't think he even breathed for 20 minutes. The doctor gave him the shot, drilled it out, filled the tooth full of silver, and we were on our way out the door in 15 or 20 minutes. It wasn't long at all. The doctor then said, Mr. Hovind, come here. I said, yes, sir. He said, look, I don't know what you said to that kid while you were outside, but I would like for you to work for me. What do you think he said? I said, no, sir, you don't want me to work for you. The child welfare office would have me in jail in a flash. You know, it's very simple. The second time that we were in the dentist's office, the kid was still scared of the dentist. No question about it. He was scared, but he was more scared of me than anything else in the world at that time. You say, Mr. Hoven, how does that save me $50,000? Ah, keep reading. He never explains. Huh. Let me know if I'm reading too fast. Uh, yes, it is a child abuse testimony. It is. And uh, you can just see that Ken Hovind has zero empathy for anybody, including his own son. Okay, we reached 5,500. That's, I don't know if you guys heard that dinging sound, but I, I, I still had the social blade tab open. The channel's now reached 5,500. Okay. So that was horrible. We're going to jump ahead to page 39. So what is it about power? Now, this is me a few years ago before I got sick, and he shows a picture of a guy with huge muscles. Have you ever noticed the bodybuilders that have the bulging muscle, have the budging muscles, budging muscles? They always walk around as if they picked up the hairspray instead of the underarm deodorant. They are very stiff and can't get their arms back down. They have those big muscles. You seem to really be paying attention to this, Ken. They're so proud of them, and they have to make sure everybody sees them. I taught high school for 15 years. If you have huge muscles, pretty much everybody will see them regardless of what you do. It's hilarious. The big football player comes into class and he says he's wearing a skin tight, short sleeves shirt and slowly flexes his biceps as he mimics raising his hand. Wow, this is like some erotica. This is like erotic fiction. Tell me more. I'm getting hot and bothered reading this, dude. Mr. Hoven, I've got a question. You don't have a question, man. You just want everybody to see you flex your muscles, that's all. They always have their sleeves rolled up four or five notches. You can always tell which ones are proud. Now, there's nothing wrong with muscles at all. There's something wrong with pride. Somebody's jealous. You see, God hates pride, not muscles. God invented muscles. Okay, it's pride that God hates. Did God invent pride? Did God invent something that he hates? When you get proud, that's when you have trouble. The Bible says that power causes pride. Okay. We had a guy in our church at Longview, Texas named Darrell Bowie. Darrell Bowie was a black fellow and a good friend of mine. What is the relevance of him being black? I mean, I, I guess it's just describing him, but he was the Texas powerlift champion. He was one of those bodybuilders. He was huge, you know, about like me. I said, Darrell, how would you like, or Daryl, <laughs> Darrell, how would, I said, Daryl, how would you like to come to Tyler Chapel where I preach every Sunday afternoon? We have about 300 black kids that attend. What is the relevance of mentioning that they're black? Why is that mentioned? 
why don't you come share your testimony and do some weightlifting for the kids? We will make it a big bus promotion. Daryl Bowie, Texas powerlift, powerlift champion coming. <laughs> I know what Dave Dallif on the chat is thinking already. He said, Brother Hoven, I would be happy to come. I said, that would be great, Daryl. This is, this is truly like some erotic fiction. Is it just me or is this getting super gay? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Kent totally has black friends. What was this? This dissertation, according to Kent, this dissertation was for his original doctor's degree from Patriot Bible College. Apparently, the president of Patriot Bible College, for his dissertation, asked Kent, he said, we love your seminar. You know, we love your seminar. Would you transcribe it? And that will be your dissertation. So remember that, according to Kent Hovind, he got a PhD for writing this paper. This paper that has no apostrophes. Okay, moving on. Let me just find my place. That Sunday, he showed up at the chapel. Prior to that Sunday, uh, he had asked me to, that was, a, that was weird the way you wrote that. Uh, prior, and do you notice how Kent never uses quotation marks to, to show dialogue? This is not how you write dialogue. Prior to that Sunday, he had asked me to bring all the weights he we could find into the high school and bring them to the gym. Daryl Bowie walked into the gym. His suit was kind of stretched all over him. All the places were about to rip. Those little kids' eyes were wide open. It became dead quiet in the gym. Daryl walked over to me and asked, Brother Hoven, how much did you get? I said, Daryl, we got all the weights out of the high school, 390 pounds. He said, 390, is that all? I said, what are you talking about? Is that all? Why is this capitalized? It took 10 of us to carry it all into the gym. He said, well, put all of them on the bar. I said, put all, this is not how you write dialogue. This is so hard to read. I said, put, I, cause it's so hard to tell who is, who is talking. I said, put it all on the bar at once, all 390 pounds. He said, I won't even need to take my suit coat off for this. That guy lay down in bench press 390 pounds, 20 times as if it were a toy. He put it back on the yoke and jumped up. Those kids' eyes were twice as big now. Then he said, okay, kids, how many of you would like to see Brother Hoven do this? You know what they said. Well, I couldn't disappoint them. I laid down and did it 30 times just to show them. Actually, I did lie down and I did try. I pushed on that bar hard, real hard. I don't think that that bar knew that I was pushing on it. Well, it's not a sentient individual. It's a piece of metal. I was pushing hard. I couldn't get it up off the yoke. And it's a good thing that I didn't. It would have killed me. I just wanted to read this part about him mentioning uh, the black kids because I think that's so weird. Okay. Oh, we have a super chat for $5 from Dave Dallifure. It says, does Kent bop the bishop or is that too Catholic? Uh, Kent doesn't think Catholics are Christians, so I don't know. And according to Kent, if Catholics are not Christians, that would make Islam the dominant religion in the world by population. Yeah, so I, I uh, you'll have to excuse me because I, I'm not seeing the chat when, I, when I'm reading. Okay, so let me see. The next page is uh, page 40 and 43. Okay, the Bible also says beauty causes pride. What is it about the girls that are really pretty? Usually, not always, they become proud of their beauty. See how pretty I am? They are so proud of themselves. I was a high school teacher for 15 years. I watched it year after year. It's almost always the pretty, talented, popular girls that are voted in as the cheerleaders. Almost immediately, something seems to happen to many of them. When they realize that they are a cheerleader, something changes. Now they are just a notch above the rest of the girls. Their sweat don't stink, doesn't stink anymore because they are cheerleaders. They get down their, they, then they get their own little clicks together. This is not how you spell clicks in, in that usage. They meet at the lunchroom and one of them sits down to eat her lunch. 
then another one of the girls comes in who is not a cheerleader. She's a few pounds overweight. She has a few warts and a few zits, and she doesn't have an alligator on her clothes. She's just not quite with it. She sits down to eat her lunch, and the cheerleader says, Uh, excuse me, dearie, this seat is saved for another cheerleader. Would you mind taking your lunch and going away someplace, maybe even, even maybe out on the highway or something? You just want to go up and slap the devil out of them. Do you understand what I am saying? They have that proud, cocky look on their face, pride. Now, there is nothing wrong with being beautiful. There is nothing wrong with a little bit of makeup. Every old bar needs a coat of paint once in a while. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. Really quickly, I just wanted to say that um, I attended a public high school. And before I went into high school, I had a similar sort of similar viewpoint on what I thought a girl who was a popular cheerleader would act like, or a girl who is the most popular girl in the school, or the most beautiful girl in the school. That was until my 10th grade year where I met a girl who was a cheerleader in my geometry class. And she was one of the nicest most empathetic and kind, caring people I've ever met in my entire life. And she went out of her way. I was very, very quiet in when I was in high school. I was extremely inter introverted. I just kept to myself. I had friends, but in class, I in this class, I didn't talk to anybody. And she went out of her way and practically forced me to come out of my shell and talk to people. And in my senior year, I met a girl who, her name's Abby, and she, I, I've told her this before, but I think she is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my entire life. She played water polo. She is one of the most popular girls in the school, in the school. And she, again, is one of the nicest most easy to talk to people I've ever met. And we are still friends to this day. We still talk on Instagram to this day. She's in, she, so this attitude of judging people based on the group that they are a part of, do you know what that's called? It's called being a bigot. Okay, real life is not like the movie Mean Girls, okay? Yeah, I, I, I'm like, Kent, who hurt you? Did you try to ask the cheerleader out in high school and she, uh, she rejected you and then you slipped on a banana peel in front of everyone? Like, what happened? But this is just such a cliche boomer take, you know? Also, Kent Hovind complaining about other people being too proud. The irony, the irony, the ironing is, is delicious. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, jumping ahead, Charles Darwin located a copy of Charles Lyell's book. Don't get these two confused. Charles Lyell invented the geologic column. Not true. Creationists invented the geologic column. Charles Darwin graduated from Bible college to be a preacher. A short time after that, after that he set sail on the HMS Beagle to fly around the world and collect bugs and birds for five years as an unpaid naturalist. Uh, okay, that's not exactly true. Now, he, uh, he wasn't unpaid. He received an allowance from his dad, a yearly allowance of several hundred dollars, which was a lot of money back then. And saying that he just collected bugs and birds is really minimizing what he was doing. He was gathering samples for the Royal Society of England. So I have notes from the video I did on this. So in 1825, his fathers sent him to the University of Edinburgh to study medicine. Uh, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. Somebody in the chat can correct me. University of Eden Edinburgh. Edinburgh. But when he was there, he witnessed surgery on a child. Surgeries at the time would have been carried out without the use of anesthetic or antiseptics and fatalities were very common. 
So watching this procedure left Darwin so traumatized that he gave up on his studies without completing the course. And he then went to Cambridge University to study theology. His botany professor recommended he take the voyage on the HMS Beagle. He didn't make any money at it. They just fed him for five years. As he walked on board the Beagle, he had two books with him, among many other things. He had his Bible. Of course, he had just gotten out of Bible college. He also had that book that Charles Lyell had just written about the geologic column, Principles of Geology. So when Kent talks about Darwin, he always says that, oh, his Darwin was a lazy loser and he couldn't get a job. So his dad uh, wanted him to go on the HMS Beagle just so they would feed him. Not true. His dad did not want him to go on the Beagle. He had to be convinced by his brother-in-law, Hosea Wedgwood, to allow Darwin to go on. And he paid Darwin an allowance while he was on the boat. So Kent gets everything wrong when he talks about Darwin. As Darwin went, read the book about the principles of geology, his faith in scripture was destroyed. Uh, no. Okay, we have a super chat from Dave Dallifur. Dallifura for four ninety nine. It says Kent was voted most likely to hang out in men's locker rooms. Are you sure that wasn't Matt Powell? It's pronounced Edinburgh. Okay, thank you. Yeah, pure projection. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, actually, never mind. Oh, this this is what I wanted to read. As Darwin. Okay, Darwin came back a doubter, a septic, a scoffer. So Darwin, what, he almost died? He came back and he, he went septic? I just, I just had to show that. I think that's so funny. Later on, he claimed to be an atheist. And after he died, his wife started a rumor that he repented on his deathbed. And no, I believe his nurse started that rumor. Why would his wife start that rumor? That makes no sense. That rumor still circulates today. People pass out tracts that claim Charles Darwin repented on his deathbed. So you are friends with Jack Chick, Kent. So you you know it's not true and yet you always talk about passing out chick tracks and encourage people to do it you've wrote you've written a chick track so i guess you're just okay with uh them publishing false information of course you are um uh, let me let me see do i want to keep reading this one let me see i might i i, I might want to skip ahead Yeah, Kent, Kent calls Darwin a late, he's a lazy loser. He was just a lazy loser. 52. I'm just checking my page numbers I had recorded, so. Okay. We're gonna skip ahead. Skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead. Skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead, head, head. Okay. Um, 52. The textbooks also state that one of the evidence, evidences, it's not a word, for evolution is embryology. Embryology, what does that mean, teacher? Well, boys and girls, we can watch different animals as they evolve, as they grow inside the mother. Evolution happens when an animal is born because it's not a direct genetic copy of its parents. So it has genetic mutations that are slightly different. Evolution happens over the over populations so an animal doesn't evolve as it's growing inside its mother that's wrong you will notice some similarities for instance they show in the textbooks that the human baby has gill slits do you remember being taught that when you went to school no a human baby has gill slits come on that was proven to be wrong back in 1908 but it's still in the textbook today so not 1874 I collect public school textbooks. I have lots of them. The human baby does not have gill slits. The yeah, the human the human baby does not. The human embryo has pharyngeal arches, and so does the embryo of a fish. In the fish, they develop to be actual gills that have openings that allow them to breathe underwater. But in humans, those arches when the, the embryo becomes a full-grown fetus and baby, they develop into glands in the ear and bones in the throat. 
I may have that backwards. That simply is bad science. Yes, it is. The reason that they keep that stupid idea about the human baby having gill schlitz is that's the only way they can say the baby is not human yet. It is still in the fish stage or amphibian stage. No, those are not gill slits. Those are folds of skin. Each one develops into different parts of the muscles in the neck. They have nothing to do with breathing. Those are not gill slits. I've seen fat folks that have five or six chins, and they can't breathe through any of them except the top one. You've seen fat folks who breathe through their chin? How do you breathe through your chin? You breathe through your mouth and your nostrils. No, the baby does not breathe through them. They never function in any capacity similar to gill slits. Nobody's saying that they are. What they are trying to justify is abortion, and abortion is murder, plain and simple. No, it is not. I know because I reside in Pensacola, Florida, where we have had several abortion clinics burned down and two doctors shot. So you know that it's murder because of that? What's murder is this, the two doctors being shot. That's murder. It's what? This sentence makes no sense. I didn't burn any of the buildings down or shoot any of the doctors. Uh, okay, nobody suggested that you did. You seem a little bit defensive there, Ken. You trying to hide something? Hmm? Hmm? Come on, do you? By the way, I don't think Jesus would have done it that way either. Jesus wouldn't have burnt any building or shot anyone? Did Jesus have access to firearms? Jesus grew up under Roman rule, and he didn't go around blowing up Roman tanks and burning down bridges. Did Romans have tanks during Jesus' time? Did they have an M1 Abrams? He was fighting a different war on a spiritual level. I think that is the way it should be handled. However, abortion is murder, plain and simple. No, it is not. They justify this murder because they say the human baby has gill slits, and it is not human yet. Real quick. Let's just look up a little, a little definition. So what is the definition of murder? The unlawful, premeditated killing of one human being by another. Unlawful. Abortion is legal. Premeditated. Usually, abortion is something that is done as a last resort when you have cases where the woman doesn't see bringing the baby to term as an option, like in the cases of assault or um, in the case of a pregnancy that puts the woman and baby's life in danger. So pre I guess in, I guess you could say it is premeditated killing. Now, I'm going to get into a rabbit hole here, but I think it's worth touching on. So killing. The act of causing death, especially deliberately. Hmm. Okay. I want to see. Ah, here's, I think here's the better definition from Merriam-Webster. Murder, the crime, crime of unlawfully killing a person person, especially with malice, a forethought, okay? Premeditated malice. I, abortions are not committed with malice. Nobody wants, to, nobody wants to do these things, okay? Despite what conservatives will tell you. Uh, that's funny. I don't, think, I don't think Jesus would body slam his wife. <laughs> Oh no. Stacy C is 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 leaving. Come back, Stacy. Okay. Uh they justify this murder because they say the human baby has gill slits that it is not human yet. No one says this. You're lying. Who says this? No, it is human the instant it is conceived. So the instant it's conceived, so as soon as the sperm breaks through the wall of the egg, that's a human? Or that's a zygote. And exterminating the life after conception is murder. The logic they use is incredible. I, I don't want to read this part. Like honestly, I don't wanna I don't wanna turn anybody off. 
and I mean, uh, I have a lot to cover, so we're just going to move on because this this part is word for word the same as his stupid seminar. So let me just see. Okay, before sixty two. If arranging things in order proves something, then I need to show you the research that I have been doing. You see, I am a research scientist. Kent Hoven is a doctor and a research scientist. Wow. Wow. Amazing. I just had to read that part. <laughs> oh. You slay me, Kent. You murder me. Kent, you murder me. You kill me. Okay. 62. Okay, this is when stuff gets crazy. This is going to surprise you. I am in favor of gun control. You say, you, Dr. Hovind. Oh, yes, gun control is being able to hold the gun steady and hit the bullseye. That's gun control. Did you know in Switzerland, every household must have a fully automatic machine gun and a thousand rounds of ammunition? Um, can somebody fact check that in the chat, please? And thank you. Every year they must qualify with their machine gun, and at that time the government issues them another thousand rounds. They shoot up to a thousand rounds every year with a fully automatic machine gun. That was a redundant sentence. Everybody in Switzerland, including every child in the home, knows how to operate a fully automatic machine gun. Have you ever noticed that Switzerland has never been invaded? Maybe that's because they remain neutral in the face of all wars. Would you like to invade a country like that? Would you invade a country like that? Gun control is stupid. The solution is criminal, criminal control. Child control, yes, but not gun control. School control, politician control, yes. We have a new world order army coming on the scene. The new world order is going to have an army and we are already training them. A lot of policemen and servicemen are going to be in it and they are going to have black uniforms, black helicopters and black tanks. That was what the Waco raid was all about. Let's introduce these police to the world as good guys. No, they are not good guys. You mark my word. The attack on the Davidian compound had nothing to do with <clears throat> child <clears throat> Hoven, Hoven. had nothing to do with child abuse. What were they doing attacking the Koresh compound? Is that how you serve a search warrant? Do you open the door with 90 armed men? If somebody comes charging up to my house with a bunch of guns and ski masks on, I'm going to think, hey, these guys are not here to collect the rent. There is not, there is not question that Koresh was a weirdo, but the whole thing was a fiasco. There is a whole lot more to it than what has been put out by the media. There are some great tapes on what is real, on what really happened at Waco, entitled Waco One and Waco Two. What President Bush did with the Los Angeles riots is interesting. President Bush called in federal troops. The Constitution states that the government is not supposed to use the troops of America against American citizens. The incident at Waco when they brought in the army tanks and the army helicopters against American citizens was a violation of the U.S. Constitution. Janet Reno should be criminally prosecuted for allowing it to happen. What happened at Waco was tragic. You are considered a cult if you believe the Bible and go to church too regularly. If you send your children to a private school or you homeschool them, you are a part of the cult. They would look at you just as they looked at David Koresh. Sending U.S. troops into Los Angeles to riots was a test to see if they could violate the Constitution and see if anyone would complain about it. Do you know what happened? Nobody complained about it. Yes, nobody complained about the Los Angeles riots. Our Constitution is being gradually whittled, whittled away from under us. We must get people in battle who will defend the Constitution. The senators and representatives are sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution. By the way, the Tenth Amendment that says that anything that is not in the Constitution is left up to the states. Joe Scarborough, Scarborough came to my house for about an hour when he was running for congressman in the state of Florida. I said, Joe, what is your basic philosophy of government? He said, the Tenth Amendment. The federal government should do what is in the Constitution and nothing else. I said, Joe, what's your philosophy of education? He said, the federal government ought to get out of the education business. They should close the Department of Education and turn the powers back over to the states. This is getting crazy. <laughs> well, I believe he said David Koresh was a weirdo. The federal government should not be involved in these things. 
The federal government has no business zero being involved in welfare. They ought to totally close down the system and allow the states to take care of that business. If the state or the country wants to pay people to have babies out of wedlock, that's the people's business that live in those states and counties. Oh, this, is, this part is my favorite. We have a huge government that is involved in things it should not be a part of their business. The National Endowment of Arts is another one. Shut it down. If the local countries want to pay some artists for nudity, then that is the business of the taxpayers of that county. I have been complaining for the past couple of weeks about the nude art in the Pensacola Airport gift shop. The owner called me and said, you're the only person who that has complained. I said to him, six nude women in the shape of a skull, that's not art, that's pornography. The man at the airport has done nothing about it. The police have done nothing about it. If people don't stand up for what is right, corruption will take over. It has always been that way. So real quickly, um, if you're not familiar with this paint, with this artwork, I just want to show it real quick. That is so like Kent Hovind. That's such a boomer thing to do that uh, to complain about a tasteful piece of artwork like that being hung up in an airport. Like, what's it to you? Don't look at it then, don't buy it. Okay, so I'm just gonna show this on screen real quick, just in case anybody hasn't seen this. So if you kind of, if you kind of squint your eyes, you can tell that this uh, picture, uh, is actually looks like a skull, which is freaking awesome. And I do not think that that is pornography. That's not pornography. I mean, is a painting that has a woman's bare breast pornography? You know that famous um, painting of the French Revolution where the woman's blouse is open? I forget what that painting is called. I mean, that's not pornography. Uh, liberty leading the people. Yeah, so you don't, I wouldn't consider that to be por pornographic. I mean, what a square, what a rube. That, and, and I love how he says, the guy at the airport says, you are the only person who has complained about that. Right on, good. That is hilarious. Okay, I'm just going to check the chat real quick. Yes, I, I mean, that painting is awesome. I mean, Sa Salvador Dali. Okay, we have 154 live viewers. Thank you to the people watching. Thank you to the people who sent super chats. Okay, um, let's see what page am I on? 63, 64. This is fun. I'm enjoying this. Let me know in the chat. Uh, I also have... I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but Kent Hovind uh, wrote a book in jail called Why on Earth Did God Let This Happen? And where he uh, talks to different Bible characters. He calls it knee mail. Like, uh, you know, when you're, when you're praying, you can talk to somebody uh, from any point in time, like email. But my joke was that it's knee mail because it's when you're in jail and you're down on your knees in front of a mail. I am not for gun control. We ought to execute criminals for certain crimes. Certain crimes is code word for being gay. The prisons are overcrowded because a lot of them should have been executed. No, the prisons are overcrowded because the, the justice system is racist and because we are arresting people for possession of marijuana and other uh, substances that is a victimless crime. If everyone that should have been executed was executed, it would do wonders for de detouring crime. I think you mean deterring. But I mean, this still technically makes sense. But it's just, I like pointing out the errors because Kent points out people's errors in their comments. And lowering the prison population. Some say, yeah, may but maybe they can be reformed. Maybe some can be, but that's not the point. Oh, okay. Well, maybe some can be reformed, but that who cares? I have a bloodlust. We have many victims' families out there who are suffering. 
They can't sleep at night thinking that the guy is going to get out of prison someday. I mean, if somebody, I mean, and I could be generalizing here, but if somebody is um, victimized by somebody and that man goes to jail, I think in most circumstances, that person, when they finally get out of jail, if they do, the likelihood that they are going to go after and target that same exact person, I would think is pretty low. I mean, unless, you know, they're truly like uh, obsessed, you know, but the uh, more likely situation is that they would get in trouble again for uh, a, another crime or a similar crime, but not for the exact same victim. I could be wrong, but that seems a little far-fetched. Um, the best thing that could happen to a person that commits murder or rape and to society is to kill them quickly and publicly. Okay, what if you find out that you were wrong and that the guy didn't actually rape the person, that there was a error in the evidence, that the lab made a mistake and they arrested the wrong guy? What do you do then? And why publicly? I mean, that went out of favor around the turn of the century in like the 1900s. That would solve a few problems, wouldn't it? I mean, North Korea has public executions. Does that mean they don't have as many problems? They still have a lot of problems. We ought to have school control and child control. What does that mean? And government control, but not gun control. Everybody ought to be required to have a gun and be a good shot with it. Then we should have, then we would have the same results as Switzerland. So people who are uh, amputees who don't have any arms should have to, should be required to own a gun. Children should be required to own a gun. People who are mentally unstable or schizophrenic should be required to own a gun. Uh, people who have been traumatized by gun violence should be forced to own a gun. What? Why? Dumb. You're dumb, Hoven. That's dumb. This is all part of a long conspiracy that has been going on for several hundred years. I don't know about the smoke-filled rooms, but some place with a bunch of men conspiring to destroy the world. These are probably the probably in existence, but the conspiracy I am talking about is at a much higher level. It is Satan versus God. Satan wants to rule this world. In 1776, a man by the name of Adam Weishaupt started a group called the Illuminati, the Enlightened Ones. Their symbol is on the back of our dollar bill, the all-seeing eyes on top of the pyramid. That was the symbol of the Illuminati. The date at the bottom of the pyramid is in Roman numerals, which translate to 1776. Hoven? Illuminati? Hoven? The Latin words annuit coeptus novus ordo seclorum translate to announcing the birth of the new Hovind order. That is what it says on the back of our dollar bill in Latin. If you will notice, behind the pyramids, no grass is growing, just desert. Hoven? In front of the pyramid, there is vegetation growing. They say once we get the new Hovind order in place and institute the all-seeing eye on top, which represents Lucifer, the light bearer will be in charge. Yes, the all-seeing Hovind on your dollar bill represents Lucifer. They know that and they fully intend for Lucifer to rule this world. The Bible states that he will for a while. When they bring the new world or when they bring the new world order takes over, Lucifer is going to be in charge. What? Okay. If you look carefully at the dollar bill, you will notice the all-seeing eye is not touching the pyramid. That's because he has not been put in place yet. The top of the pyramid is not done. Did you know the Great Pyramid in Egypt, from which this is modeled, is an interesting structure? Did you know that? Did you know it's interesting? If you become hooked on this, you'll be hooked for life like a drug addict. I believe the builders of the Great Pyramids were either Noah or Shem, who built it after the flood. Okay, this part is just interesting. Satan is trying to muscle in and take over, and he will not have a problem. Before you get all worried about the New World Order and what is going to happen when all these problems come, read Psalms chapter 2 or Psalms chapter 37. It will calm you right down. Okay, uh, let's see what, what page I'm on. 86, 89, 92.
and uh, this is the part of um, Kent saying that the UPC barcodes on products uh, are somehow the mark of the beast because they spell out 666 in binary. So that's really stupid. How did I, did I fix it? Okay. Uh, why the type, why the tiny strip in paper money? You might want to be up to date on the events happening that relate to the mark of the beast. The UPC code was developed in 1972 that is, and it is on all, nearly all products, but a system was needed to keep track of the cash. The U.S. Treasury began marking bills in 1989, that's when I was born, with a magnetic strip of paper. It is a magnetic tape through the center of the paper located on the left end of the bills. If you have a denomination of five or above and it was printed in 1989 or later, it will have that strip. Then why can't you pick up a dollar, a five dollar bill with a magnet? You can hold it up to the light and see it very clearly. That's, that's not magnetic. That's, uh, that's part of the fraud protection. That little magnetic strip is of the same type that is on the back of your credit card. No, it's not. If you rub the strip a few times and then grab it with a pair of tweezers, you can remove that little strip out of the money. What? Written across the strip in a $20 bill is 20 USA. The amount changes for each of the different denominations. Well, duh. The excuse that is given for this change, of course, is to prevent counterfeiting. Yeah, that, okay. They want to be able to track the money and find out where it goes. Uh, I'm just skip, skimming a little bit because, so he says that, uh, okay, the testimony that he gave me was that they were testing the system. Uh, some of the desert storm troops were injected with little computer chips in their hands. So Kent says that the mark of the beast is going to be computer chips injected into hands, into your hand uh, to track people and uh, that you will not be able to buy or sell when you, if you take the mark of the beast. To which I would respond, Kent, have you ever heard of a black market? How, how does having a microchip in your hand start, uh, stop people from buying or selling? You could still use cash. Well, he says that you'll only be able to use credit cards. But do, I mean, how are you going to stop Bitcoin? How are you going to stop cryptocurrency? You can't stop online transactions just because people have a chip in their hand. That's stupid. It's dumb. People can remove it. I can just remove it. You're stupid. Dumb. All right. Okay, we're, we're almost done, guys. I may, I may read a bonus story from that other book. You guys can let me know. Uh, what, why on earth did God let this happen? It's a pity party. Okay, let's see. 9,300. Question. Is it true that a chromosome has been found that proves that homosexuals are born with the inability to choose their lifestyle? I understand that all the research that has been done on this has been found to be false. Well, that's a relief. There has been research that, how much research has been done on this? What research, you have a link? There has been research that indicates nearly all homosexuals come from families that have a weak father figure and a dominate mother. I believe that research shows there is a social link where the children are raised to be wimps or whatever. The research shows, that's what the research says. The scientific conclusion of the paper says, uh, we, we proved our hypothesis that there is a social link where children are raised to be wimps or whatever. I say that homosexuality is a sin, not a sickness. It is a sin according to the scripture. The emphasis on eliminating gays in the military has taken the emphasis off adultery and fornication, which is also a sin for which they were to be stoned in the Old Testament. People are always quick to point out, hey, we ought to stone the homosexuals. Who says that? Matt Powell? What is good, is, what is good for the goose is also good for the gander. If you believe stoning the homosexuals is still valid, then you ought to also stone those commit those that commit adultery or fornication. As much as I am against homosexuality, homosexuality has drawn our attention away from other sins. I think Hoven doth protest too much. 
I do not buy the so-called chromosome link, and I believe the research has been shown to be erroneous. There was there never was a chromosome link. So is this good? Is this good? I don't know. Uh, what? Uh, no, this is not good. Even if I mean, even I'm glad he didn't say yes, but this is still messed up. <laughs> Ridiculous, ridiculous. Uh, one of the motives of NASA is to prove the theory of evolution. No, by using taxpayer dollars. You didn't pay your taxes, Kent, so you don't get to complain about that. What about UFOs? Where do they fix? Where do they fit into the picture? Uh, there, Deo says there are two kinds of USOs. First, the U.S. government UFOs. First, the U.S. government owned and operated UFOs. The U.S. government has UFOs. He says that the second kind is satanically owned and operated UFOs. He says that Satan has always used that mode of transportation to get around because the devil can only be at one place at one time, whereas God is in all places at all times. That may be far fetched, so please do not accuse me of saying this is true. He said in 1920, they did experiments with electrogravitic propulsion. The idea was to charge an object up using a Van de Graaff generator to obtain electrogravitic propulsion. If you were to stand on a block of wood and put your hand on the aluminum ball of Van de Graaff generator and flip the switch on, causing a rubber bell to go round and round, you will become charged up. When you, re when you reach 10,000 volts, your hair stands on end. What happens when you reach 100,000 volts? Do, 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 do. We have solids, liquids, and gases. What happens if you keep heating the gas? You would get plasma. What if you keep heating it? We do not know because we are unable to get that gas that hot. Maybe there are phenomenons at the extreme that we do not know about. The idea that an object could be charged to the extreme. If you could charge an object with enough voltage, millions and millions of volts, it would become immune or inert to gravity. What? Gravity would not have any effect on it. As a jet takes off, the passenger would be forced back into the seat by G-force because a jet has a motor in it and the passenger does not have a motor. When a jet comes to a stop, the passenger should have a seatbelt on or he will fly forward due to inertia. However, with electrogravitic propulsion, all the rules would change. It would be very different. Every atom would be drawn electrically. The passengers inside the craft, aka Satan, would be drawn by electrogravitic propulsion. The vehicle could go from zero to 5,000 miles per hour in a second, and the passengers on board would not feel a thing. The vehicle could go from 5,000 miles per hour to zero, and the passengers would not move at all. The witnesses that have reported UFO activity have described them to have instantaneous start-to-stop start movements, which would kill a person in a jet. Some believe it is all demonic activity. It may be, or it may be the U.S. government Top secret aircraft. Holy crap. What? So, so Satan, because Satan can only be in one place at a time, since God is everywhere all at once, including in your butthole right now. So Satan has to ride around in a UFO that uses electrogravitic propulsion so it can go from zero to 5,000 in one second. Uh, okay, Kent. Okay. I mean, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, it's probably true. It's probably true. It's probably true. It's probably true. Hoven, it's probably true. Hoven, UFOs, aliens, Satan, Hoven. Ooh, I'm getting tired. I am, I am honestly tired. I'm pretty exhausted from, uh, from... My appointment earlier today so i may uh i i feel like we're gonna have to call it after that i mean how do you follow that up let me see um i think i have a few pages left but let me just see what what those say i might if i want to read those or not do, do, do. is there such a thing as global warming the earth is cooling off da, da, da. 102, 103. Um, okay, okay, last one, last one. Who or what is the Illuminati? 
There are many good books written on the Illuminati. These books refer to a conspiracy. There is definitely a conspiracy, but I don't think it is a human conspiracy. I don't believe there is a smoke-filled room where a group of men get together and decide to teach evolution in all the schools. You don't? Yes, you do. I believe it is at a much higher level. Or lower? Like, hell? I believe that it is a satanic conspiracy. The reason these different people come to the same conclusion is not because they all met together, is because they all work for the devil. Individuals like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds are, and other millionaires are not the enemy. We can love them and win them to the Lord. The public school teachers and professors that are teaching evolution are not the enemy. Win them to the Lord. They can be saved like anyone else. They, the devil is the enemy. Okay. Sorry if I haven't been highlighting comments that much. I, uh... Okay. Well, I, I am exhausted from, from all that crazy. <laughs> I don't know about you, chat. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, this one was a little different. So let me, uh, let me show you real quick um, if I can just open this other document. Because maybe next time, maybe next time, or in a, maybe in a later video, we could crack this guy open. Hmm? Got illustrations, see an email, <laughs> an email. Yeah, so um, let me know in the comment section if you guys enjoyed uh, this sort of different kind of Hoven video where it's just me reading his ramblings instead of actually responding to one of his videos because, hey, at least we don't have to listen to Kent. I mean, you listen to me do a Kent impression, but you know, you don't have to actually listen to Kent ramble on. So. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in the live chat. We have 165 live uh, viewers in the chat. Thank you guys so much. Um, you know, I'm so happy to see uh, the amount of support and engagement I just spit that the channel is getting. You know, uh, I think my viewers are awesome. Thank you guys so much for, you know, watching my content and uh, hitting like and subscribing. The views have been honestly pretty crazy like when i look at other channels like i i posted a tweet the other day just because kent loves to talk about views where i think the uh the most fair test if you want to compare the views of two channels i think a pretty fair test is just look at the last five uploads count, add up the number of views and then look at the last five from another channel now there can be you know other factors um that can mess this up, you know, like upload time, but whatever. So Kent's, I did the math and I, I tweeted this, Kent's last five videos added up to 2000. My last five videos was uh, 35,900, almost 3,600, almost 36,000 views. Kent's sub count, 197,000. My sub count is 5,500. So I'm, I'm definitely punching above my weight, which means that the content that I put out, my viewers all watch it, and I'm also getting new people coming in and seeing it, or people who aren't subscribed watching it. I just think that's awesome. I mean, I feel like, you know, I don't know, I must be doing something right, you know, because I know that people, they don't just watch the videos because they want to see Kent. That's what Kent thinks. But I like to. I would like to think that it has something to do with my production value and the commentary that I make. Um, I and I'm always trying. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm always trying to make my streams have a higher production value. Uh, this video should uh, be able to be watched on YouTube in 1440p, which is higher than 1080p. So I, you know, I'm always trying to make it look nice and make the stream look cool for you guys, so it's visually engaging and not boring to look at. Um, but thank you. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, hit like, leave me a comment, uh, letting me know what you guys think. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, hit Turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified as soon as I go live, because I get a lot of comments from people saying that, oh, I, I always miss the live streams. You know, I, you know, I, I, you know, I never see you when you're live. Well, if you turn on the notification bell, you'll get notified as soon as I go live. I almost 
when I do stream, it's almost always going to be at 1 p.m. Central or around 7 or 8 p.m. Central weekdays. So I don't have a very set schedule now, but that's usually when it is. And I try to change around the, uh, the times so people in other time zones, like uh, on the other side of the world from the U.S., can catch a live, a live stream because it is different. So, uh, you know, do all the things with the buttons. And if you'd like to support my content, like uh, Stacy C and be a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash atheistjunior. Look at the tiers, look at the benefits, and consider pledging as low as $1 per month. Now that will unlock all of the benefits. And you can get early videos, exclusive live streams, uh, vote on new videos. Okay, we have a super chat from Adam Lees for $2. It says, we appreciate you. Well, thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. Seriously, the generosity really means a lot to me. I, I, and I know a lot of times I read super chats and I, I kind of just reading them and, and kind of moving on. But I want, I want you guys to know that that's not because I don't appreciate it. It's just because, you know, I have so many comments that I'm cycling through and, you know, I'm, I, I'm a one man show, you know, I do everything by myself on these streams. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always uh, moving on to the next thing, but I do try to really um, show the super chats for longer than most comments and uh, really let people know that I do genuinely appreciate the generosity because I know that money is tight nowadays with COVID and the pandemic. And I, I appreciate any uh, donation that you guys can show because um, it really helps me a lot. You know, it, it helps, uh, it helps tremendously. Um, well, I was going to say one, one, I'm sweating. Um, I'm, I'm in front of these really bright lights when I film. So I'm, I'm basically blind and sweating like a pig when I stream, but I do it for you guys. I do it for you. 